In this video, we're going to talk about the polar form of a complex number. Now, you've heard the phrase polar form before. It's with vectors. Uh, so this idea that I keep talking about where complex numbers and vectors are kind of the same, this is just more evidence and more uh, another time when you get to use your vector skill in complex numbers. All right, so you can write down a little definition there, but it's going to be easier if we take a look at a, a picture. All right, so here's our complex number here. We'll call it complex number P. And it's got a real component, which is given by X. And it's got an uh, imaginary component, which is given by the value of Y. Um, all right, now we can do some maths with this to start working on our polar form. Probably the most obvious thing is to talk about the distance from the origin. That's part of polar form. Uh, now, this distance is given in the equation by, or in the drawing by R. And finding that distance is going to be really straightforward. Uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared um so r equals the square root of that now if this was a vector we would call that the magnitude it's not a vector it's a complex number so we've got a fancy name for it it's the modulus so the modulus of the complex number z is given by and but that that notation looks similar looks like the magnitude of it, it's the modulus. And we say that the modulus is equal to root x squared plus y squared. So that's the length from the origin to the vector or to the complex number. So now that we have that R value, let's think in terms of x and y uh, and their relationship to theta and R. So I can write it as uh, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse which is x over r, which means that x is equal to r cos theta. And I can do a similar thing here with sine theta is equal to y on r. So y is equal to r sine theta. So we have these two relationships here that are quite important. So now let's write it in polar form. So we have a vector called z, right? And in Cartesian form, it can be written as x plus y i. Now, x can be written as r cos theta. So I'm going to write that. I'm just substituting that in. And y can be written as r sine theta. But it's not just r sine theta. It's r sine theta times i, the imaginary number. All right, so now we have vectors for, um, sorry, we have um, r cos theta for x, r sine theta for y. Now, you can see they have a common thing here of r. And now I can write this in as cos theta plus sine theta i. Now, we're really pretty much done here. Z equals r bracket cos theta plus sine theta i. We're just going to create a little time saving device. Cos theta, need an S, plus sine theta i happens so often, it's, it's in every single one of these, that we've got a really, really nice little shorthand for cos theta plus sine theta i. Ta da! Z equals R cis theta. Um, this, I don't know where cis comes from, but there's a C in it, there's an S in it, there's an I in it. There's a C, an S, and an I in cos theta plus sine theta I. So maybe that's it. But you pronounce it cis, S-I-S. That's how you pronounce it. So that is polar form of a complex number. A little bit of theory here. Uh, the angle theta, let's give it a proper name. It's called the argument, the argument of the complex number. Uh, but a complex number might have like multiple arguments, right? Because... Um, this angle theta, it might be 45 degrees, or it might be, if I go all the way around the circle and come back, it might be 405 degrees. If I were to go in the other direction, it might be um, negative 315 degrees, something like that. So it's important, they're called coterminal angles. So we're not going to do that nonsense with complex numbers because every complex number just has a position. So we can probably just give it a single 
argument to single angle to deal with it. All right, so to overcome that whole multiple angles thing, we're going to use something called the principal value of the argument. That's, do we just call it argz, A-R-G-Z, capital A-R-G-Z. Uh, now, important to note, the principal value of theta is now considered between to be between negative pi and pi, where radians are referred to, preferred over degrees. This means that we consider angles measured clockwise from the x-axis, negative angles, and positive angles. It'll make sense when we do a couple of examples there. But negative pi to pi, we're going to work in radians here. All right, so let's do three quick questions here. Uh, write the following angles as arguments. First one's 200 degrees. So we start here, we move around 200 degrees, and we get to there. But it says here that Arguments are measured from negative pi to pi, from negative 180 to positive 180. We've gone too far. So instead of moving positive 200, we should take the negative way around. And so the, answer, the argument of 200 degrees is negative 160 degrees. That's 200, so that's negative 160. Um, 7 pi on 4, let's do that in a different colour. So pi on 4, 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, 6 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4, that puts us here. And that's going to be, now that's gone way over the, the pi radians. So we need to work in reverse again. And that's negative pi on 4. And 17 pi on 6. All right, that's going to be uh, quite a bit. Uh, well, we know 12 pi on 6 is 2 pi. So 12 pi on 6 is the whole way around the circle. Um, and then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There. Um, now, that's the same as, we can go in the positive direction now, and we can say that 17 pi on 6 is the same as, 5 pi on 6. Alright, so we're going to write the following complex numbers in polar form now. We're going to need two things. We're going to need an argument and we're going to need a modulus to be able to do that. Uh, now the modulus is the easiest thing to find, so let's find that first. Uh, Z equals 1 squared plus root 3 squared. Square root the whole lot of that. Uh, that's going to be 1 plus 3, which is 4, root 4. So the modulus of z equals 1 plus root 3, i, is equal to 2. Now, I'm going to do the next bit with a little picture. You don't have to draw this picture once you've done it once, because then you'll understand it. But let's draw us a little picture here. Um, Cartesian plane, 1 plus root 3i. So 1, root 3. Okay. And that's 1, and that's root 3. So there's our little right angle triangle there. And we're trying to find, we're trying to find this little angle in here. So we can use um, just trigonometry to do it. We can say that theta equals, um, or tan theta equals opposite over adjacent root 3 on 1 which means that theta is equal to shift tan root 3 on 1. And we should all know that that is pi on 3. That's really the end. We're finished. We can now say that z is equal to 2 cis pi on 3. Now, remember what cis stands for. It's cosine um, pi on 3 plus sine pi on 3 i. Um, okay, uh, we didn't really have to do much there because our angle was our argument. Maybe in this next one, we'll have to make a, a little consideration. All right, so we'll do the same with this next one here. Uh, the argument's going to be pretty... Sorry, the modulus is going to be pretty straightforward here. It's root 2 squared uh, plus negative 2 squared, which is root 8, which is root 8, which is 2 root 2. 
All right, uh, then the argument, I can we can draw a little picture again here. Uh, 2 minus 2. So it looks like that. 2 minus 2. All right, let's do our 10 theta equals op. So with this angle here, 10 theta equals opposite over adjacent. So always the imaginary component over the real component is negative 1. Um, okay, so theta equals, oops, let's try that again. So that's tan theta equals negative 1. So theta equals um, two, 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 negative pi and 4. Okay, and now it's time to think about our argument. Does that work? Yes, it does, because it's in the negative direction, and it's a negative pi on 4. So yes, that is the argument that we're looking for. We can finish this off now by saying that z equals 2 root 2 cis cis negative pi on 4. So now we're going to go the other way. Uh, it's actually very straightforward, I think. Uh, so z equals 2 cis bracket negative 2 pi on 3. So the important part here is just to remember what cis actually is. It's 2 uh, times cos negative 2 pi on 3 plus sine negative 2 pi on 3 uh, with an i there. All right, uh, now what's cos negative 2 pi on 3? Well, unit circle, negative 2 pi on 3, negative 2 pi on 3. So there's pi on 3. So it's 2 times cos pi on 3 plus sine pi on 3i. But super important, don't forget, C, A, S, T. It's a negative quadrant. So that's going to be negative there. That's going to be negative there. And that's going to be negative there. All right, so that gives us now cos pi on 3 is 1 half. So it's 2 times negative 1 half minus sine pi on 3 is root 3 on 2 pi. All right, and that gives us negative 1 um, minus, so 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. 2 times that is negative root 3 pi. There is our z. There's our polar complex number in Cartesian form. A lot more I want to say about polar uh, form of a complex number, but that's long enough. Um, go away, go and do some questions, go and do some work on those, and then we'll, we'll come back and do some other stuff.